Hello. Hey, how are you? Great, great. Thanks for joining us. So what are we going to be talking about today? I know it's going to be really different from the previous conversations that we've had. What are yes. we getting into? Yeah, so we're going to talk about uh, vector search okay. uh, in Azure uh, with Cosmos DB uh, and a few of its friends, uh, OpenAI, and Azure Cognitive Search. Awesome. Uh, uh, there, there's there's three ways to do this in Cosmos DB, and I'm just going to talk about one of the ways, but all three are in the GitHub repo that is referenced uh, in the presentation. Oh, I'm excited to dive in. I'll get off the screen and let you do your do your magic. Oh, nice. All right, so I can see the slides. So um, yeah, so hey everybody, um, I'm I'm honored to be here. Uh, I'd like to just talk to you about vector search uh, in Cosmos DB, and just a, a brief confession. Uh, I actually knew nothing about the subject maybe three months ago, right? So this has been a self-education project, and uh, uh, I, I think it's 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 super pertinent. And so I'm I'm glad to, to share what I've learned uh, with you. Nice. All right. So let's talk about the outline of the presentation. So uh, we're going to talk about um, vector search in Azure with Azure Open AI, uh, Cosmos V NoSQL API. Uh, Azure Cognitive Search, and uh, I, I love this data set. So th there's a fellow named Sean Lehman, uh, who's a, I believe a sports writer, but he's he's created this epic uh, data set. Uh, he calls it a database, but it's a it's a beautiful set of CSV files, essentially the history of baseball. So uh, I use that for a lot of my uh, demos. So we're going to explore baseball statistics and searching players. Um, and so we're going to talk, uh, so the outline of the presentation is, is number one is just concepts, uh, amazingly simple concepts, very few. Uh, we're going to talk about the business use case for, you know, what it is I've implemented here, uh, and then talk about the actual implementation. Uh, yeah, just a little bit about me. So, I, uh, you might notice some gray hair. Uh, I've been around a long time. Uh, I've been in this field for, uh, many more years than I like to say. Uh, uh, and uh, so it took me about, so it's Python day, right? So I started way back in COBOL, the small talk, Java, Node, uh, et cetera, et cetera. It, it took me about 25 or 30 years to, to find Python. Uh, it, it's become my, my primary language. I find I can do virtually anything in it. Uh, so it, uh, for, for folks who maybe uh, aren't using Python or are curious about it, I, I really encourage you to, 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 to take a look at Python reach out to any, any of the speakers, including myself. Uh, I'd love to, to help you. Um, likewise, uh, the, um, uh, I, I, I've worked with many databases, uh, hierarchical databases way back when, a uh, whole bunch of relational databases. Uh, a really serendipitous thing happened to my career in 2009 when uh, I started to use MongoDB on an application. Uh, it, it turned out to be 50 times faster for the particular use case that that we otherwise use MySQL with. And so I was kind of sold at that point. So I've been very passionate about NoSQL since. Um, again, this, uh, this presentation is based on this repo right here. So maybe take a screenshot of that. Uh, and I've, I've authored a few small PyPy packages. Yeah, so, so my, my, my point here is that maybe, for, especially for the younger, younger folks, is that uh, there's a tremendous amount of change here in this field. Uh, so, so please keep up with it. Uh, it, it. It's it's been a great ride for me. I absolutely love it. Uh, learning new things all the time, and including Python. All right, let, let's get on with it. So concepts. So amazingly few concepts to talk about. So uh, vector search, right? So what exactly is a vector? You might ask. So uh, a vector is a one-dimensional array of scalar uh, values, meaning they're uh, uh, Primitive, primitive values. Uh, for the Python folks, you can think of them as, as, as a NumPy array uh, of floats, of Python floats. So that, that's, that's simply what a vector is, just a, a one-dimensional array, in this case, of floats. Uh, so vectorization is the process of taking text data. Uh, sorry for the shouting with my red font, bold, but, uh, but, but, but that, that's, that's the essential thing to understand is that when you create a, a vector, you're passing in text data. You know, you're not passing in numeric data, maybe like machine learning with, with features and columns. You're passing in text data uh, to the OpenAI uh, SDK. Um, uh, 
Now, the OpenAI uh, Open SDK calls uh, uh, vectors embeddings, the exact same concept, just a different word for it. So basically you pass in text data to OpenAI and you get back embeddings, okay, which again is an array of floats. Uh, yeah, the, op uh, the OpenAI SDK is super simple to use. Uh, I'm going to show uh, surprisingly little code in, in this presentation, but you can do a lot with one line of Python code, and so I'll show you that shortly. Uh, so so uh, what, what exactly are embeddings anyway? So embeddings uh, measure the relatedness of text strings, right? So we're in, in this baseball example, we're going to pass in a string for one player, we're going to pass in a string for another player, and via vector search, we're going to compare the players to see how close they are. Um, and, uh, embeddings are information dense, uh, but are computationally efficient. Uh, I will say when you, when, the, when you print out a vector, you might at first be horrified at how, how large and verbose it is. But again, you have to think that that's the printed version uh, in memory, right? It, you know, a number of floats. So in memory, it's going to be much more efficient than, than what you might think. All right. Uh, so the next you know, concept is okay, great. You know that that's a vector. You know what what is vector search? Uh, so a vector search is simply searching a database uh, using vectors, right? So uh, search engines uh, now uh, are optimized for uh, for vector searching. Uh, the, in the case of Azure Cognitive Search that I'm going to be talking about, you know they can do traditional searching, uh, but also it can do vector search. Um, one thing that's super interesting about vector search is that uh, the, the parameters you pass in to the search uh, is a vector itself, right? So you're going you're gonna to pass in a vector uh, to the search engine, and the search engine is going to give you uh, results. In this case, Azure Cognitive Search is going to give us JSON documents uh, with the search results. Um, so the next, uh, next thing to cover is, okay, great. You know, what exactly does a vector look like? Uh, so in the case of the uh, uh, OpenAI embeddings, uh, we're going to get back an array of 1,536 floats, all in range from minus one to plus one. Uh, this is some of the magic that OpenAI does. Uh, so uh, this, is, this is an array of, of three floats, dot, 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 and it ends with three floats. So just imagine this is 1,536 floats. Um, yeah, so uh, you might think that it's uh, it's very verbose, but it's actually an extremely efficient uh, data structure. Uh, the, these uh, these vectors uh, or embeddings, uh, and and it's it's uh, compared to like text, like processing text in a search engine versus processing vector. Uh, you know, there's like orders of magnitude more efficiency uh, with vectors as opposed to processing raw raw text. Um, okay, so that's great. So we have search engines, vector search engines, you know, so what, what exactly can you do with them? So you can essentially do any, any search case, uh, any use case that, that you're currently doing with search. Um, uh, so, so we can handle images, documents, text data. I'm going to show you a way how I crafted numeric data into text. Uh, I'll cover that shortly. Uh, we can we can find uh, handle searching for baseball players. Um, now I will say, uh, in my opinion, uh, vector search is great. It's it's uh, you're going to get some great uh, pertinent search results, but sometimes you just want to do a, a simple search, uh, and and so traditional search engines, uh, you know, can be best for some use cases, and vector search can be good for other use cases. Now the beautiful thing is Azure Cognitive Search offers both. Right, you can do vector search or traditional search. Um, now, okay, so uh, uh, you're probably saying, okay, great. You know, where does OpenAI come into this? You know, you, Chris, you're talking about Cosmos and cognitive search, but where does OpenAI come into this? So, OpenAI is used to generate the embeddings, right? So, we're going to pass in a text text value, and we're going to get back uh, embeddings from the OpenAI uh, service. Uh, now, you're probably familiar with uh, some of the models uh, in OpenAI, you know, ChatGPT, right? Who on the planet at this point hasn't heard of ChatGPT? Uh, Dolly, you know, for image generation. Uh, but maybe lesser known are some other models 
such as text-embedding-ada002. Uh, so that, that is the um, OpenAI model that we use to generate uh, these embeddings. And I'll, I'll show you some code about that shortly. All right, so that, that, that's all the, all the concepts we need to cover. Vectors, vectorization, vector search. Uh, business use case, let's talk about that. Uh, so again, the uh, domain for this data uh, is baseball, baseball data. Uh, and you know, I, I kind of asked the question. You know, you know, certain uh, uh, you know traditional search engines are great for answering things like, okay, great, who who hits home runs at a similar rate as Hank Aaron, you know, a great slugger, uh, major league baseball hall of famer. Uh, who steals bases at a similar rate as Ricky Henderson? You know, who has an earned run average as Ron Guidry? I mean, you can ask kind of relatively simple questions, right, with, with a few parameters, but you know, the business use case I'm trying to satisfy is here is that who has similar overall performance profile as player X, you know, given, given the full breadth of their, of their baseball statistics. Uh, and, and let me apologize here for, uh, for folks that aren't familiar with baseball, uh, especially not in the U.S., uh, but uh, the, the, the game of baseball is, is, is loaded with statistics. Uh, there, are, there are so many statistics and they've been captured since 1890. Uh, so it, it's, a, it's a very dense uh, statistical domain. But, but, but nonetheless, baseball players can be measured by many, many statistics. And so what I'm striving to do is, is take those many, many statistics for a player and, and bundle them into something that OpenAI can, can, can create a, an embedding on. We'll get to that shortly. Yeah, I, I, I've found that the search results, you know, you'll find you're going to get really subtle and great search results. You're, you're going to get some search results that you didn't expect. Uh, so I was searching through this and I was getting baseball players back. And it's like, oh, yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't think about this player. But man, that, that, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a great result. And that, you know, that, that player does meet that criteria. All right, um, let's talk about my, one of my favorite players of all time. Uh, Ricky Henderson, this fellow here, uh, he is in the Baseball Hall of Fame. Uh, I, I, uh, I, I uh, admiringly call him a statistical unicorn in that he, he is an utter, utter rare combination of speed and power, uh, as well as some other things. Uh, he's the all-time Major League Baseball leader in terms of stolen bases uh, by far. I mean, nobody is, is even close. Uh, yet, he also hit a lot of home runs. He hit a lot of triples. He, he scored a lot of runs. He's a run scoring machine. Uh, he's a left hander. He played left field. Uh, so the, the, the question I'm, I'm asking in, in, in this demo is, okay, who is like Ricky? Who is like Ricky Henderson? You know, the, the full breadth of their statistics, who is like Ricky? Now, you know, all, all these vectors for all the players are, are loaded into, the, uh, into Cosmos and therefore Cognitive, cognitive Search. So you can search on any player, right? So I didn't build this around one player. I'm just using Ricky Henderson as an example. All right, so um, sorry for the busy slide, uh, but you can, uh, so, so basically you can try to find, to use simplistic measures to try to find players like Ricky Henderson. So again, sorry for the eye chart, but I loaded, essentially loaded this data to a Cosmos DB Postgres. Uh, database, and therefore I can query it in a relational way just for ad hoc queries. So this particular query is, is querying for players who've hit at least 100 home runs, stole 500 bases, and have a stolen base percentage success of 80%. Now, uh, you know, it, so it yields Ricky Henderson, Ty Cobb, Tim Raines. You know, not, not bad. Uh, however, you know, this search is only on three dimensions, right? You know, the baseball data, you know, the player might have 20, 30, 40 different attributes. You know, this particular query is just on three, right? So it's going to uh, have a bias towards those, those three attributes. What I'm looking for and, and what you might look for in, in vector search is, hey, just tell me who's like Ricky Henderson, right? As simple as that. And the nice thing is you don't even have to construct the, 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 the query, right? So... Here, the SQL, for example, so this is representative of, of, your, of your search engine. Uh, so you have, you know, the burden is on you to construct this query. Uh, with vector search, you just say, you essentially just pass in a vector, right? 
and say, okay, match match that vector. It, it, it's it's really quite a different way to do things. All right, so let's talk about the implementation. Uh, in the repo, as I said up front, there's there's three different implementations of vector search with Cosmos DB. Uh, I'll just call them out first. So uh, in, we have Cosmos DB Mongo B Core API um, that offers in database vector search. I'll slide to the bottom. We also have Cosmos DB uh, Postgres um, API, uh, which is obviously a distributed Postgres database. Uh, it offers uh, vector search via the PG vector uh, extension. Uh, but the but the middle, uh, what I'm going to talk to today about is uh, vector search with Cosmos DB, Cognitive Search, uh, and this combination. So again. In the repo, there's three different ways to do vector search. I'm just talking about this middle path here today. Now, uh, the, the uh, process is uh, not shown. It's that I started with the CSV files from the Sean Lehman database. I, I wrangled them uh, with Python uh, into, uh, in the repo, there's a file called documents.json with the mm, 18,000-ish uh, players. And so what, what you do with, uh, what you can opt to do with your uh, open API subscription is run this vectorization program. So it reads this input, you know, it, it, for each document of the 18,000-ish, it will uh, compute the vector, you know, invoke open AI to get the vectors. And then at the end of that process, it, it writes out this documents with embeddings JSON file. Um, then there, uh, there's three different database loader programs that load each of these databases. So that, 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 in a nutshell, is the, is the architecture of what I'm showing today. So let's, let's go forward. All right, so uh, let's go back. So yeah, that's the architecture. So let's, let's dive in. You're probably curious, like, okay, great. You know, but what does, this, what does this data look like, Chris? So let's, let's take a look. So uh, I'm going to have four slides in a row uh, here of, of what this JSON data looks like. Doing a time check. I think I'm on time. Um, so uh, here's the top of the baseball player document for Ricky Henderson, uh, birth year and first name, last name. He was uh, five foot ten, 180 pounds. He bats left, he bats right, throws left, et cetera, et cetera. Nothing spectacular here. Uh, his batting statistics from uh, in, in, the, in the database. There's a batting CSV file. So the, his batting statistics got merged in. And this is where you might see that indeed uh, he is a statistical unicorn. If stole 1,406 bases, uh, all-time leader in baseball, yet he he hit 297 home runs, which is just a, an astounding number. Uh, he was caught stealing 335 times, so he was successful over 80% of the times. Uh, he was a run scoring machine. I'll talk about that next. So anyway, this is this is uh, part two of the document. Uh, part three is where, uh, so, uh, you know, I've done some machine learning uh, in my past, you know, and, and as, a, as a machine learning data engineer, you know, one creates features, right, in, in your data. You might start with some raw data, but you need to kind of, you know, wrangle or craft that data into features, you know, numeric columns that are normalized, normalized values between like zero and one uh, to pass to the machine learning algorithm. So it was my instinct to do this. And, and actually my first attempt was simply to use numeric values and, and the search results were, were less than I expected. Uh, but nonetheless, I, I did these calculations, right? Uh, you know, given the raw data from the previous um, uh, documents, uh, like his, um, he, he scored at a rate of, uh, like every, every fit at that, he, he scored a run. So that's basically, he's a run scoring machine. He hit a pretty high home run percentage, uh, stolen base percentage was pretty high. So that, that's kind of like the calculated uh, information for this baseball player. So again, at the bottom, I pose the question, you know, hey, this is starting to look like machine learning, uh, but uh, is this the right approach? Uh, I personally concluded no. All right, so this is the end of the uh, baseball player document uh, for Ricky Henderson. So you'll see that, that I've, in, I've included the embeddings, right? So this is the output from the OpenAI call, right, to, to get the embeddings. Now, the question is, what, what value do we pass in to OpenAI to get the embeddings, right? Do we just pass in, you know, Fielder 1979? You know, I'm just looking at these previous attributes. Do we pass in, you know, 
10961, et cetera. We're just pass in all those values as, as text and, and hope that uh, that'll it'll, uh, you know, produce the right results. And, and I, I actually include a no, right? So instead, uh, I, I created this, uh, what I'm calling an embedding string. Uh, I'm, I'm creating this string value that I'm, I'm using to pass to open it up. Um, yeah, so here, here's a little bit more detail on the embedding string. So if you've done machine learning, you're probably familiar with like binning values, like, like t-shirts. Like for example, if your chest is between you know, 38 and 40, uh, you're a medium, and at 40 to 42, you're a large, et cetera. So, so, so those are the bins, you know, given these numeric values, those, those are the bins. So I, I took that same approach. So instead of passing into the text, you know, Ricky Henderson's batting average was, you know, 0 0.2787, blah, blah, blah. I, I instead uh, crafted the string called batting average underscore 279, right? Uh, which, which is, you know, a, a, a string version of this statistic, but it has the label with it. And then here are all these other statistics, right? So his total gains, he bats R, throws L, throws left. You know, he had a number of hits, you know, strikeout average. You know, so all, all, the, all the many um, facets of, of the baseball player are represented in the, str in the string value uh, as quote unquote binned text that we're passing into OpenAI. Um, so I, 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 I would like to coin this phrase if nobody else has, has claimed it. So uh, we've all heard of uh, in machine learning, there's feature engineering, right? Where you take this raw data and you craft it and you, you create numeric features that, that aid the uh, AI or the machine learning model. Uh, likewise, with ChatGPT, we've heard of prompt engineering, right? It's a kind of an art and a science in crafting prompts that you pass to uh, OpenAI. So I, I would like to coin the phrase text engineering, right? And that's taking your, your values from your, from your data, right? And crafting a text value that you can pass to OpenAI. So uh, we'll have to see if that, that term uh, survives. All right, so uh, now, now that we've, we've created the open embeddings uh, uh, or the embedding string value, let's, let's figure out, let's look at some code. So I believe this is the first code I showed, but this is the code for uh, creating uh, the embeddings, right? So it's just a snippet of Python code, but uh, you know, you do a pip install OpenAI, that's their SDK. Uh, you do the imports of the OpenAI object. Uh, you configure the Azure OpenAI uh, SDK with those four values, you know, the URL, the key type is Azure, the version, right? So these URL and key come from your Azure uh, open AI service and go to Azure portal to get those values. And uh, to get the embeddings is as simple as this one highlighted line of code here, right? So open AI dot embeddings dot create. And the input that we're passing in is that text string, right? That embedding string value that I, I just showed the previous page. And we're saying, okay, uh, use this, um, this model, open AI model called text embedding eta 002. Uh, once we invoke that line of code, we get back E. Uh, so E is, is the result of the embeddings. And, and the, the embeddings themselves is, is nested here. So E uh, at the key data, first element, the key at embedding. So that's the thing that, that returns the list of 1,536 floats. Uh, so literally uh, in you know, a half dozen lines of code, uh, you can use the OpenAI SDK to get your embeddings. All right, so that's that's how we got the embeddings. So let's let's revisit the architecture. Um, so I've, I've talked about this on the left. So let's just talk about the right and focus here on uh, Cognitive Search and NoSQL, uh, Cosmos NoSQL. So where we're going next, we're just going to configure now Cognitive Search, and we're going to load Cosmos. Um, now Cognitive Search, if you haven't worked with it, I I, I use the word beautiful. It has a beautiful uh, REST API where one configures uh, Cognitive Search and where one executes searches with. So it has a number of uh, REST endpoints, uh, either GET or POSTS, pass in uh, authentication headers, but it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing to work with. Uh, with Python, you, know, you certainly use the requests uh, library on PyPy. Uh, so that, that, that is how the uh, repo is implemented. 
Now, there, there are three uh, key objects in Azure Cognitive uh, Search. So one needs to first create a data source, and that's the thing that, that points to your Cognitive DB account. And then you need to create an index, and that, that's the thing that defines, okay, my documents look like this. I want to make these fields uh, searchable and indexable, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And then the third thing you create is an indexer. And that's, that is the object in Cognitive Search that, that meshes the data source and the index. So, it, it, so the indexer reads from the data source uh, and populates the search index. Uh, you, can, you can set that indexer on a schedule. Um, it can be as little as five minutes. And, and again, uh, examples and working code for all of this is in the repo. Uh, it was just way too much to present uh, in one session. Uh, just briefly, uh, you might be wondering why, gosh, well, why is it called Azure Cognitive Search, right? Not just Azure Search. So uh, it's Cognitive Search because it integrates beautifully with Azure Cognitive Services. And for example, you can do things like, you know, let's say you're starting with documents, like, like PDFs or Word documents, and, and maybe you want to you have English users, but maybe the documents are in Spanish, right? And maybe the documents have images, and the images have text, right? Uh, and you want to extract that text. So Azure Cognitive Search can do that. You can create a pipeline of these built-in skills. You can write your own skills. So you can kind of, uh, that, that document, the PDF, you can crack the document is the terminology, you know, extract the images, uh, get the text from the images, get all the text, translate it into English, and then ultimately put, put the data into Cosmos. So, so that in short, that's, that's why it's called Cognitive Search. You know, it has the full array of Cognitive Services behind it. All right, so th this, is, this is how one configures Azure Cognitive Search. Uh, it, it, everything is JSON, so you configure the index with this. For example, I'll look at the second field. You know, so the Cosmos DB documents have an attribute called player ID. Uh, it's of type string. Uh, we want to make it searchable, filterable, sortable, and fastable. Right? So that's how we define that field. So there's nothing spectacular about this. This is, this is standard Cognitive Search. But page two of the schema is where the uh, OpenAI uh, vector search comes into play. So you, you define a vector search here. This is kind of boilerplate code. Uh, you define uh, some name. This name here corresponds to this name here. Uh, so, and this is saying that there's a field in the Cosmos document called embeddings, and it's a collection of scalars. And the dimension is 1,536, right? As we talked about earlier. So this is this is the uh, vector of data, and this is how we define a uh, vector search in Cognitive Search. And again, all, all these all this is in, in the repo. Uh, loading Cosmos DB. Uh, this is super simple. Uh, I, I have uh, some reusable classes uh, that are that are in the repo. I'm, I'm not going to dive into this, but essentially you. We just read the, uh, the JSON file and, uh, and load the database. Super simple. There, there's, uh, this is, you do a pip install Azure Cosmos. That's, that's the SDK. Accelerating slightly. All right, so uh, I think two more real uh, content slides. So uh, first, uh, we're, going to ex we're going to search finally for players like Ricky Henderson. So the first thing, remember I said when you do a vector search, you have to pass in a vector itself, right? So uh, in the, uh, what we do here, and I, I didn't call it out on a separate page, but we, we execute a search to Azure Cognitive Search just for Ricky Henderson. Just for Ricky Henderson, we get the Ricky Henderson document back, and it has his embeddings, right? So armed with that embeddings or, uh, or, or, or vector value, we're going to invoke Cognitive Search with this search and say we're just, we want to get these attributes, but we're passing in this vector. Right, so so this is the vector that that describes Ricky Henderson. Uh, so that's that's uh, that's all we need to do. We do a HTTP post to the endpoint, uh, and we're saying k is ten, so we want up to ten uh, results. One minute to go. All right, I'm hustling. Uh, and then finally, ta-da! Uh, this is this is the search result. Right, so I'm, uh, I'm not going to execute it, but but the, the these just happen to be the first two search results, and they were. Uh, at like an epic success in that it got a, it got a broad range of players that uh, I wasn't really expecting. So Ricky Henderson was left fielder. They're both left fielders. Uh, Barry Bonds was a slugger, 
Well, kind of slow, so was uh, Ricky Henderson. They both had a lot of home runs. And Lou Brock, you know, he, w- he was like the epic baseball uh, base stealer for Ricky Henderson. Uh, so these are both great and pertinent search results. Uh, these are just the top two. There were others that I omitted. Uh, so, yeah, it, it really excellent quality search results. Uh, so in summary, uh, vectors are computationally efficient. Uh, you can do a what I call a full spectrum search uh, on the full breadth of the statistics of a baseball player or whatever it is in your domain that you wish to search, search for. Uh, I, I think there's emerging art of text engineering. Uh, you can execute vector search with these three different ways in Cosmos. And uh, if, you, if you're not new, if you haven't, uh, if you're not familiar with Python, please, please take a look. Uh, it's a great language. You can do so much with it. And okay, so um, I am the closer for Python Day. Uh, I'd like to uh, ask you to applause for everybody uh, who, who, uh, people who you got to hear present today. Uh, this is Mariano Rivera, who is the closer for the New York Yankees. So basically, whenever he came into the game, it was over, right? He was shut down the other team. And with that, I'll say thank you very much. And if yeah. there's any questions. I'd say you hit a home run. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think you did pretty awesome there. Just to, to add a little pun to end the day here. Nice. <laughs> yeah, so many great comments. People loved, loved the session in the chat. Uh, lot, lots of good puns in there as well. Um, so thank you so much, Chris, for joining us. This has been absolutely wonderful to hear all about. Okay, thank you, everybody. Yeah, have a great afternoon.